Okay, I've been observing a number of things that have been happening and I've come to a conclusion that Jonathan Moyo is involved in Sengezo Chabangos, recalls. You remember I did a video two days back and I was saying that the person who wrote this letter of recalls and whatever is happening, this person is preview to the laws of Zimbabwe and how the legal framework of parliament works. Must be. He said that someone from ZANU-PF uh, who understand and interpret the law. And this person can be able to say, okay, look, there is a loophole here. We can actually recall members of parliament. So this person in the form of of, uh, of uh, saying yes, Chabang, is not acting alone. He's acting with someone. And that somebody is somebody who is very, very well versed in the law. Whether from Zanopiev or whether from wherever, they have studied the first letter of Nelson Chamisa and then, and I am totally convinced that this person should be Jonathan Moyo. He could be working with other people that are still in government. Remember, Jonathan Moyo has got some people that are working for him that are inside the government of Zimbabwe or that are close to parliament and that some of them, they are inside Zanopiev. So the reason why I point Jonathan Moyo is the surfacing of the picture when Nelson Chamisa said he doesn't know Sengezo Chabang and the timing and knowing the intricate dates of when they were planning to launch Triple C. What it concludes to me is Jonathan Moyo knew how uh, the, the Triple C was formed. He was being briefed of every step of the way of how this whole process was working. And to me, it sounded like he also wanted probably a ticket of getting out of Kenya. So this is a project that he had so much interest in mind. And he was hoping that if it comes to fruition in 2023, that will give him a ticket probably of coming and contesting as uh, whatever, or maybe given a ministerial post if Nelson Chamisa then succeeds to become the president of Zimbabwe. So it was a project that he wanted to see. That's why he was gunning for structures and everything he wanted one to get inside this point that i want to make is that there was a mistake that nelson chamisa did of not disbanding mdc immediately after monzora he shouldn't have waited that was the time for him to one to set up structures to form a new party citizens question for change was supposed to be formed in 2020 immediately that would have neutralized monzora that would have made uh, parliament recalls very, very easy to say every person from MDC were withdrawing you. And when you withdraw that, after that withdrawal, what it would then mean was the people that would then form the new party were actually new people, not the old guard that you come from MDC, whom you don't know what their agenda is. So it was a mistake for... Nelson Chamisa want to trust Tokozan Kupe, to trust Jonathan Moyo, to trust uh, to to form a party using the people that are from the old era of MDC. If he really wanted to have a new thing, he could have just worked with the guys that were in the student union, the likes of Anama Kumboro, Aruzivishe, and the new guys. Bring them in, start a new party, and these guys were going to be very, very loyal. And you wouldn't have any problem of these kind of people that are feeling entitled that we want a position in the party. And these people will end up coming back to bite you because one, they have been in the game for a long time. They are in it for positions. And as much as Triple C now or M uh, Triple C wants now to then navigate around them, they are not going to win. Remember the words of Tendai BT saying that we are back into 2020. Which means that we are likely to see ZANU PF uh, working with these people because it's like a, a defender slipping up in the 18 area whilst he was he was trying to kick the ball. Your enemy, any any non-striker will take that ball and score. This is the same thing that is happening right now. Triple C have got a defender who slipped up inside the 18 area, and ZANU PF is using this to score goes against triple c this is what i see i don't see the interference of zanu pf much but it is because they have slipped up 
they have left a loophole that ZANPF can exploit. And in the end, these are the consequences. And I tend to agree with Timba Mliswa with what he said that in this now, the same position that I held in 2020 to say Nelson Chamisa was supposed to go and just form a new party altogether. In that instance when that court battle was won, that was the time for action to say, you do that, we do that, we form a new party and we are done with MDC Alliance. We wouldn't have had Monzora participating in the 2023 elections. He would have, it, it would have been a gone issue by then. And they would have had, um, the by-elections would have actually been many. Because they have one by-elections are Rwanda of any, many, many MPs. And in those MPs, Triple C was going to win. But it would win with new guys. But what do you make of the involvement of Jonathan Moy and him tweeting and knowing a lot of intimate details that we don't know and bring them out to the fore? What do you make of this? And what do you think that Triple C now needs to do? Because right now, the SADAC report is out. And the fact that the SADAC report is out and the Triple C is in this mess, it makes ZANPF to be on a vantage position. And that leaves the, the SADAC report to be not even considered. ZANPF will continue doing whatever they are doing because they'll feel like, oh, Triple C, they are in, in, in all sorts of troubles and we can't engage them. So, Unless Nelson Chamisa sorts out this mess, he cannot find a way to force ZANU-PF's hand or to force any members of SADAC to come in to their rescue because if they are in this mess, then we have a problem. SADAC will just say, okay, sort out your mess in the opposition before we can recommend whatever you want to rec us to recommend, whether a rerun or whatever. But this is what I think is happening. Thank you so much for watching. I uh, think I would love to hear your thoughts and uh, what do you make of this scenario? Do you uh, think Jonathan Moyo is angry at Nelson Chamisa and is trying to get back to him? What do you make of his involvement in this war saga? What is his interest?